Hey guys, what's going on? Mizu back here with another video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys the best settings in Rocket League to maximize your success. And I'm not only going to give you the settings, I'm going to explain why I have the settings the way that I do. And if you want to change it in any way, here's what I would recommend the kind of parameters within to change them. Let's set you guys up for success. And without further ado, let's get straight into this video. All right, guys, so I'm going to start with audio. I'm skipping over extras in chat because it's not really important. So we're going to start straight into the audio. Now, in my opinion, audio is very, very important and people definitely underrate it. Now, a lot of professional players will actually turn off all the music in the game and the ambient and crowd noises as well. This just allows you to focus on the game a lot more. It removes a lot of the like, what a save from like the announcer and you hear the crowd in the background. It removes all that stuff. So... Um, obviously, if you like it, you can have it, but personally, it's a massive distraction for me, so I remove it uh, from my game, and I would recommend you do the same. All right, we're going to be in interface here. Now, surprisingly, this is actually pretty important. A lot of you guys don't realize the importance of the interface settings. Now, interface, essentially, the interface scale is just going to be how big the menu thing is. I have it at 100 because it doesn't really matter. Display scale. Same thing, it's just how big this kind of is. Not a huge deal, set it to 100, do whatever you want with it, it's not a big deal. Now, nameplate scale is very, very important. Now, this 140% is actually what Squishy used in Season 6 when he won the World Championship. These settings that I have are the exact settings that he had in Season 6. So, that's what he used, I really liked it, I still have it, haven't changed it. Essentially, nameplate scale is going to affect how big your opponent's and teammates' names are in game, which is really, really important because it defaults to 100, and that's actually really bad because when you're playing 1v1, you can't see your opponent behind the ball very easily. So I would recommend bare minimum 130. I run 140. 200 is way too much. Don't do anything over 180. It's just too big and clunky. Uh, you want, in my opinion, 140, 150, 130 right in there. Uh, but that's up to you. Play with what's comfortable for you. I have 140. Definitely don't run that 100. Um, nameplate mode, not very important. Uh, as long as you're on default, that is the most important about that. Just leave it on that. There's no reason not to. Your match notifications. This is very important, actually. Um, I have it set to time updates only. So... This is actually really important because for me, this is very distracting. Um, if you have it set to all, when you make a save, it's gonna be like save at the top of your screen and stuff like that. I do not like that. I find that distracting. I wanna stay in the zone. So I have it set to time updates only. And essentially what that does is it only gives me a notification on my screen when someone scores, when the kickoff is going three, two, one, go. And when it's saying there's 60 seconds left, 30 seconds left, 10, nine, eight, seven, you know, you know what I'm saying. So it's only the important stuff that you need. Everything else is extra in my opinion but that's up to you. Um, colorblind mode, this is if you're colorblind, you can switch it on or off. It basically makes orange more orange and blue a little bit, I think lighter blue, I can't remember, but if you're colorblind, use that. Force default team colors. Now, I think this one's really important and people gloss over this all the time. So, force default team colors essentially makes it so when you're having like a club match you know for example as you can see in the bottom left of your screen uh it says es for mizu i don't know if you can actually see that because i'm technically over it but it says mizu in the bottom left which is my name and it says es which stands for empty space it's my rlcs team when you're in a club and you're playing a club match, so a 2v2 or 3v3 where everyone on your team is in a club, the same club, and then everyone on the other team is also in a different club, but they're all in the same one for each other. It creates what's called a club match, and that essentially is gonna make it so the default colors of your club will be the colors of the arena, and the colors of the nameplates, and the colors of the goals, and the colors of the car. I don't like that. I just want it to be blue and orange. It's too much for me. Again, it's distracting. I also play professionally, so you got to understand that I just want it very simplistic so I can stay in the zone. If you like that, use it. If you don't, don't use it. Um, but I personally have it to force team fault team colors, which means that it's going to be orange or blue no matter what. Team color boost meter essentially makes it so your boost is blue or orange, depending on what team you are. I have it on, but you don't have to have it on. Uh, metric, if you're using metric or... Um, I'm Canadian, so don't get mad at me for not knowing it. Metric or Imperial, I see at the bottom, Imperial. Uh, ball cam indicator, I personally have it off 
Um, it's kind of distracting again, but you can keep it on. Essentially, it just tells you when you have ball cam on or off in the bottom corner of your screen. I think it's kind of useless, but your call. Ball arrow, very important. Have this on. It points to where the ball is when you have ball cam off. Super duper important that you have that on because uh, sometimes I'm looking at the ball and then I have to switch off and I'm looking at the cars, but I need to see where the ball is in comparison to me. So the arrow points towards it. Very important to have that on. Performance graph. This is if you're on a computer and you just want to see how many frames you have. As you can see in the top right, you'll see how many frames I have right now. Um, that's just if you're testing stuff out. Let's move on to controls. So this is the bread and butter of Rocket League. These next two controls and camera. Very, very important. So we're going to get to the bindings last out of the controls here. But we're going to talk about steering sensitivity and aerial sensitivity. So steering sensitivity you want your sensitivity and trust me on this you want your sensitivity at 1.2 same with aerial aerial and steering at 1.2 or higher if you do not have it set to 1.2 or higher you are handicapping yourself you literally turn slower if you have it set to less than 1.2 you turn slower it is a fact okay um, so I have steering set to 1.5 and aerial set to 1.3. Uh, as you can see, it just affects how much you're going to turn with how little you need to push on your joystick. But if you have it set below 1.2, you actually turn slower because you just have less sensitivity. Trust me on that. You just do. Uh, controller dead zone. If you don't know what a dead zone is, essentially it is the part of your joystick on your controller that does not Reg register any inputs so basically to explain it your joist your dead zones like this it's like a circle right and your joysticks in the very middle of that circle if you push it to the left like this you know you'll turn left right you push it over this side but there's a little circle within your dead zone or within your your analog sticks range of motion that's your dead zone so the dead zone is essentially if you push it like a millimeter to the left in the dead zone, it won't register anything. So you want to have a pretty small dead zone. This makes it so you don't need to push your con uh, your controller analog stick very far to any direction for it to register. But if you have it set to zero, look, controllers aren't perfect. Equipment isn't perfect. It's going to register that you're going in a certain direction when you aren't actually touching your analog stick. So people have issues where they'll use a controller for a while and you'll have something called stick drift where you'll automatically turn left or right or you know forward, back, whatever. If you jump, this is your dead zone. So you want to increase your dead zone if you have stick drift or just get a new controller. Now 0.05 is actually pretty low. It's a pretty small dead zone. I get sick drift on my controllers after about two months using this dead zone, but it is a very elite dead zone. It allows you to have a lot of control over your car very easily. You don't have to move your joystick very much. It just gives you a lot more options. The dodge dead zone is essentially how far you have to push your joystick to register it as a dodge. So you can be turning left and jump two times and you won't actually flip to the left if you're barely pushing your joystick. But if you're pushing your joystick, let's say a lot and you jump two times, you'll flip. So what is that, you know, part where it kind of cuts off? At what point do you need to push your joystick all the way? Or at what point, you know, 75% of your range of circle, do you need to push your joystick for it to flip? That's your dodge dead zone. Most people have it between 0 0.5 and 0 0.9. Uh, I run it at 0 0.7. It's pretty much in the middle there. So I have to push it at about 70% of how far I can possibly go with my joystick for it to recognize that I want to flip when I press the X button or A button again, essentially. So I would recommend having it around here. Uh, it's up to you where you want it, but I would recommend that. Definitely disable controller vibration. It's again, just distracting. There's no point. Um, I don't use mouse and keyboard, so no comments on any of this, but um, I do recommend on toggle if you're holding one button to keep ball cam on, that's pretty insane. You're disabling one of your fingers by doing that. So definitely not the greatest decision. Uh, we're going to get into the view and change bindings now. So uh, the important ones are going to be at the very beginning. Uh, I do highly, highly, highly recommend following these exact settings. Even if you have to change your settings on your controller, I would recommend just genuinely changing them. I changed my settings about four or five times throughout the time of playing this game. The most recent one was about 3000 hours ago uh, in game time. When I made a change, I had about 6,000 hours in the game. Now I have nine. Um, 
and I changed my settings pretty drastically, and it was very difficult because I had so much time in the game, but I got used to it. So if I can do it, you definitely can. Uh, it just takes a little while, and it is pretty annoying, but it is super, super worth it. So I would recommend just changing your settings to mine and sticking through it no matter how difficult it is because it is very difficult. So let's get straight into it. Jump, obviously, on the X button. I would recommend it on that. Boost. Now, you're going to want this on a back trigger. I have it on R1. That's what most pros use. Um... The reason you want it on a trigger is because when you're jumping up for the ball and you're fast aerialing, you need to be able to jump and hold boost at the exact same time and spam a button, which is the X button while holding boost. Now that's pretty difficult to hold circle and spam X exactly at the timing that you want. So that's why I would change the boost to a trigger in the back. Same thing with power slide. If you're going for some like diagonal wave dash, chain wave dash recoveries or wall dashes or ceiling drift, stuff like that, where you land on the ceiling sideways, you want to keep your momentum and just insane recoveries in general that are more used by higher level players. You want your power slide on L1. This is because you can't really hold square and press the X button exactly how you need to um, and like smash it really fast. So definitely have it on a trigger. I recommend L1 and then put your air roll on the same button as your power slide because you're not you, you can't air roll while you power slide it's impossible so it's like why not have it on both it just saves a binding for later so i'd recommend power slide air roll same binding um and then boost on another binding but also a trigger uh so that's what i'd recommend those three are like the most important that people mess up all the time so definitely have it on these settings i would recommend and then the next one would be uh, rear view. I do recommend R3, just it's an easy binding and you're not really gonna use it for anything else. So set it to R3, set your scoreboard to the share button, the PS share button. I don't know what you could do it for an Xbox controller, but recommend uh, if you're using PlayStation 4 or 5, uh, set your scoreboard to the share button. And then here is another very important setting, your air roll left and air roll right. I would recommend uh, putting left and right because you've removed the bindings from square and circle, just putting them on square and circle, whatever you're comfortable with. Now, people always ask me, Mizu, your circle's on the right side and your square's on the left side, so why would you put air roll left on the right side, which is circle, and air roll right on the left side, which is square? The answer to that question is because it does not matter. Simple as that, it, it seriously doesn't matter. Um, you're not gonna be thinking, I need to roll to the left here to get the hit on the ball. That's not how it's gonna work. You're gonna get such good control over your car at some point where it's just muscle memory. You don't need to think about it and you'll just do it. So circle for me was easier to press than square while I needed to press the X button. So air rolling while jumping, it was easier to press circle for me. I was better at air roll lefting in general. So I was like, let's put air roll left on circle. Simple as that, easy explanation. That's what I would recommend. Let's hop into camera settings. Now these camera settings are the exact camera settings that Squishy Muffins used in season six when he won the world championship. And I have been a fan of them ever since he did that. And I have never changed it. I've used these since 2018 and I've literally never changed them. So field of view 110, I think it's important to have the max field of view possible. You just open up what you can see. Very important to increase your vision. Uh, distance 280. Now distance is gonna be the thing that increases or decreases how far you are from your car. As you can see, I'm really close to my car here versus I'm really far away. I think 280 is like a really, really good distance. You're just, you're, you're close, but you're not too far, you know? Your height, I have it set to 110. That's just gonna be how high or low you are above the car. So I have that set to 110. Your angle is essentially gonna be the angle in which you look at your car. So if you're looking from like up here or like down here, I'll show you. So zero angle would just be flat with your car. Whereas negative 15, you're literally like looking like you're from the heavens, man. You're just way up here. I don't recommend that. So, um, pardon me. We're gonna set that to four, which is mine. Stiffness, now stiffness is a very important setting. Essentially, if I set it to zero stiffness, if I'm really, really fast, I'm gonna go very far away from my car, but if I'm very slow, I'll come right up to my car. Uh, stiffness just essentially affects how much your controller will move, depending on how fast you are. Um, it's very important to have stiffness set to something because that amount of disparity between your camera settings can mess you up, but it's also important not to have it set to one and just lock you in because you can't really tell how fast you're going because uh, your camera's not moving at all, which kind of sucks. So I have it right in the middle. I have mine set to 0.55. I can really tell what's going on with that. It's just slightly more than half, but uh, I think it's a perfect setting. Swivel speed, essentially how fast uh, you'll swivel. 
when using your camera. As you can see, I'm barely touching it and I'm like looking everywhere. I'm gonna stop before you guys get dizzy, but that's essentially just your right stick, how much you need to push it. Whereas if I put it to zero, as you can see, it takes so long to turn. It's crazy, not worth it. So let's put that up to 0.55. When I have it set to this, I literally just like tap it and it will snap back when I let go. But it's also soft enough where I can kind of control it so I can look exactly where I want to with some like analog stick control. So I think it's really, really good. That's what I would recommend, 0.55. But if you don't like that, I'd set anything between three and seven. That's what I would recommend again for swivel speed. Same thing as stiffness, right around the same thing. Transition speed, now this is important settings people mess up all the time. Definitely don't have it set to one. I think one is like super slow. Just, it's so slow. Essentially transition speed is how long it takes from you pressing ball cam to car cam and how long it takes from your camera to fully transition between looking at the two. Definitely recommend that. And then invert swivel essentially just makes it. So if you push left, you're gonna see left and see right. But if you turn off invert swivel, if you push to the left, oh wait, no, it's up and down. That's what it is. I forgot about that. So if you push up, you're gonna see up. You push down, you're gonna see down. I personally like it on inverted. So if I push down, I see up and I push down or push up, I see down. Now that's just preference, but it's up to you. Uh, that's what I have it set to. And uh, yeah, that's about it, guys. I hope that this video helped you guys. If there's any questions about any of the settings that you'd recommend uh, to me or that you have any questions for me, uh, feel free to drop that down in the comment section down below. I hope that this video helped you guys learn a little bit more about the settings in Rocket League and maximizing uh, your potential at being good at the game with the best settings that you can possibly have. Um, if you guys want to learn any other mechanics and tap into my knowledge of the game so you can get better, feel free to click any of the stuff up here. I have an air dribble tutorial video. I have a wave dash tutorial video. I have my channel that you can go to for even more tutorials on top of that and just gameplay tips in general. I highly recommend you guys go ahead and check it out. I upload every single day, so there's lots of content for you, to, uh, for you guys to go ahead and check out. Without further ado, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and peace out, ladies and gentlemen. See ya!